Great Wolf Lodge Bloomington is a family-friendly resort just one mile down the road from Minnesota's Mall of America. This is not only a nice wilderness-themed hotel on its own, but it features a bevy of amenities, most notably a 75,000 square foot indoor water park. So in this video, I will be reviewing that water park and explaining if it's worth experiencing if you're in the Minneapolis area. This water park opened back in 2006 as the Water Park of America. Back then, it was attached to the Radisson. In January 2017, Great Wolf Lodge purchased the property and was rebranded as a Great Wolf Lodge by the end of the year. This water park is conveniently located just a few miles from the Minneapolis-St. Paul Airport and just down the street from the Mall of America. This road is filled with countless hotels, but this is arguably the most entertaining of the bunch. The exterior isn't quite as grand as the ground up Great Wolf Lodges, but the first impressions are still pretty solid. It's impossible to miss the tangled mess of green water slides protruding from the building. Normally there won't be scaffolding there, but the hotel was doing some refurbishment during my visit. Overnight guests get the water park included with their stay. If you stay in a weeknight, you can sometimes stay here for as little as $120 or $150, which is what I did. It's a great deal considering the quality of the rooms and amenities. The prices can be doubled or tripled on weekends though. Alternatively, you can visit with a day pass. Compared to some of the other Great Wolf Lodges, these day passes have much less variation in price by day. They cost between $50 and $55 per day. Some of the other Great Wolf Lodges can cost three figures in weekends. That's insane. If you want to save even more money, you can arrive after 4 p.m. for a 20% discount. You get your water park wristbands at the front desk and then you walk through the arcade to enter the water park. Once inside, it's hard to miss how hot and humid it is. The water park is deliberately kept in the mid to upper 80s, so the water feels refreshing year round. Like many indoor water parks, this one does look dark on the inside due to the absence of a skylight. You do have some side panels to let in some natural light, but it's still pretty dark. The walls have been painted to add some ambiance though, and I like the woodsy lighthouse in the center of the park. And then the slides that appear green on the outside are bright blue on the inside. It's weird the slides are painted two separate colors but they look nice and fresh. The water park basically forms a loop. One of the coolest aspects is that the Crooked Creek Lazy River circles the entire park and is connected to both the tube slides and wave pool. It's particularly funny with the latter how you go from leisurely floating down a stream to being bombarded by waves when you enter Slaptail Pond. The one downside with this setup is that you need to watch out for little kids. Our tube was almost launched backwards on a smaller guest once the waves started to hit. Accessing the slides can be a little confusing at first. The River Canyon Run Family Raft Slide and Otter Run Body Slides have the same staircase. Two of the three Otter Run Slides are about halfway up the tower on a platform. The final Otter Run Slide is placed atop the tower with the start of River Canyon Run. Most people will be queuing for the ladder, so you'll need to awkwardly squeeze past them to access the body slide. Making things even more confusing is that the upper Otter Run Slide doesn't return back down to ground level. Rather, it dumps you off on the same platform as the lower two body slides. That same platform is also home to the Alberta Falls tube slides, but those ones have a separate staircase you need to go up to get to them. During my visit, everything was a walk-on except River Canyon Run, which was consistently a 15 to 20 minute wait. This water park has less attractions than some of the other Great Wolf Lodges, but some of the water slides are surprisingly wild. The highlight for me was Alberta Falls, specifically the left side. I rode in a double tube and this slide had two ridiculous turns. The final one nearly inverted our tube when he tried. I'd feel myself lift out of the tube and then the tube would comically wipe out into the water. I don't know if the same effect happens in a single tube, but any double tube was flipping into the water at the end. I couldn't get enough of this slide. Now the right side is much tamer by comparison, so that one's more family friendly. River Canyon Run is the park's longest slide by far. This family raft slide is a mix of fully enclosed and open sections. The enclosed sections were supposed to have lighting effects, but most of them were down for my visit. The slide starts off fairly slowly, but the final section has some shocking turns where you slide quite high up the walls. Otter Run is a mixed bag. The lower two were disappointing, as you could really feel the seams in your back. The upper one is both faster and smoother. You could see the spots on the slide that had been reworked, which possibly explains the superior ride experience. 
This park also is one of those Flow Riders and Wolf Rider Wipeout. These aren't my favorites, but I know they're great for people who have aspirations of surfing. For the young kids, you have a decent water fortress in Fort Mackenzie. I like how this ride is basically placed on an elevated island in the center of the park. Then you also have two activity pools in the back corner. Chinook Cove has a series of basketballs and hoops. Then Bigfoot Pass has the lily pad crossing that kids absolutely love. One weird thing with this park is that all the slides would close midday for an hour long safety break at 1pm. I have never seen this at any other park before. I don't know if this is the norm or was just due to staffing, but it occurred for both days of my stay. Hotel guests have RFID bands doubling as their room keys, but day guests will likely need a locker to store items. These are tucked in the back corner of the park. It's surprising these aren't closer to the main entrance, but not too many people use them. Their cost was about on par with other water parks from what I could see, but most people are just keeping their stuff on lounge chairs. Beyond the water park, you also have an arcade with a fleet of modern games, a big rock wall, and an elevated ropes course. I didn't try any of these activities, but they were highly popular with kids. So do I recommend the Great Wolf Lodge in Bloomington? On a weekday, yes. If you can get a room for $120 to $150 like me, that is a great value between the quality of the hotel, its convenient location, and the indoor water park. I wouldn't pay the weekend rate though, but it is more affordable than some other Great Wolf Lodges. While this water park doesn't have the most extensive slide lineup, there are some wild ones and the minimal crowds make it an attractive option if you enjoy water parks, especially in the colder months when all the outdoor ones are closed. So definitely look into a day pass as well if you're looking for an indoor activity. While I haven't visited Valley Fair Soak City, I think that park appears to have a better slide lineup, but this one has that intimate atmosphere and more manageable crowds. Then compared with the other Great Wolf Lodges I've visited, this one is towards the middle of the pack. But I again do like the setup and it has some interesting slides. It will be interesting to see how this park stacks up to the indoor water park being planned for the Mall of America. That one is expected to cost nearly $420 million, be four times the size of Great Wolf Lodge's indoor water park, and open in 2024 if approved. It sounds like it'll be comparable in scale to the DreamWorks water park. So those are my thoughts on the Great Wolf Lodge Bloomington. What are your thoughts on this place, whether it be the indoor water park or the hotel itself? How do you compare it to the other Great Wolf Lodges out there? Let me know your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.